Hey guys, welcome back. Episode 9 of the San Jose Sharks Rebuild. We just got through a heartbreaking Stanley Cup Finals loss as we were just two wins away from winning our first Stanley Cup here. Now entering the 23-24 season, we are at free agency. We just went through the draft, had another very, very strong draft. And we are at free agency to see if we can go after some of the big names. Guys, as always, before we get into the video, make sure you leave your comments and feedback about what you think I should do in the future episode. As we're still trying to evolve this series as we look to rebuild the Sharks and get our first Stanley Cup. All right, so let's hop right into it. We are on July 1st, 2024, as uh, we enter into our next season. And it's been really successful, I'm not going to lie. I mean, like, we rebuilt the first year. We ended up with Matthew Savoy. We tried to tank a little bit. We ended up with Connor Bedard in our second season. And then the third season, I mean, it just went extremely well. I mean, we made the playoffs for the first time, which I, it was a goal, but we didn't know how it was going to turn out. And now, you know, here we are. The Florida Panthers end up winning the Stanley Cup in 23-24 in our third season. Now we enter the fourth season of our rebuild, and we were just that close. And it's going to be awfully tough to get back there, as it always is. But we can start with free agency and see what we can start with here in terms of pro or kind of fast forwarding the rebuild right now uh we've got 17 million in cap space and really we've got a really solid core i mean we have a lot of rookies we'll take a look at our contract situation right now uh we have a lot of rookies still on their entry level deals which is going to save us over the next few seasons so right now we've got hurdle and meyer both 90 overall connor bedard is still on his entry level deal for two more seasons and he's an 87 overall uh, we've got alex corn who we might move on from uh, maybe in the offseason right now, I'm going to have to take a look as he is an 87 overall at 6.5. And honestly, that's not that bad. Uh, we have him for one more season. Burakovsky is 6.5 at 85. That's a little pricey. And then Couture at 8, which is pretty tough, but he is our captain. He's not going anywhere. And then William Eklund has one more season. On his entry-level deal, he's an 85 overall. Eric Carlson, 11.5 for another three years. And again, the rules of this series, we cannot trade or move Eric Carlson or Mark Edward Vlasic. But thankfully, Mark Edward Vlasic retired. Uh, Carlson, it does have three more seasons. We can't trade or move him. So Matthew Savoy, he's got two more years left. It's our rookies that really shined huge in this playoff run. Uh, Mario Ferraro, he's going to need a new deal. We've got Cody Glass. I mean, our forwards are pretty stacked. That's the issue because I don't know where we're going to fit in some of these big guys. We'll take a look uh, in the system as well. Ozzy Weisblatt uh, and Kniezhev, they're both 80 overalls, and they're very young, so they're going to be pushing the lineup as well. Um, not sure what we're going to do there. We've also got some rookies in terms of goaltenders. We've got Melnichuk, who's a 74 overall. He's not going to improve anymore, so either is Sachenko. Goudreau as well, and then we've got uh, O'Sullivan, who we were able to grab in that insane draft in year two. Um, he's a high elite, but he's years away. In the system, we've got, or sorry, in the uh, main roster, we've got Talbot for another year, as well as Lindbergh, and I would love to improve upon that. So we might have to there. In terms of defensemen, we've only got four up with the big club. And clearly, this is the area of need. We should really spend the majority of our money and cap space on a really high-impact defenseman because we just don't have any. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look there, and we'll start with defensemen that are in free agency and see what our options are uh, because, like I said, uh, the what we have right now is pretty, uh, pretty bleak. So we'll take a look at defensemen, and we've got Rathbone, who is an RFA. Nothing we can do about that. Um, I don't want to spend the insane amount of picks and whatnot to get him. However, we do have uh, Devin Taves, who's an 89 overall top four uh, elite, and he is 30 years of age. Wants a six-year deal at $7.2 million, which honestly isn't that crazy uh, of a contract. But um, we'll take a look at what other options are there. We've got Alexander Carrier, 88 overall, 27 years of age. And he is a UFA as well. That might be the play, to be honest with you. And he doesn't want an insane contract. So maybe Carrier is the play. Uh, we do want one of these two, in all honesty. So we can go 7.2 uh, for Taves, who's 30. Or we could go with Carrier. Let's take a look at Carrier and see what we can go here. He wants 5.6. Let's go with 6 million for six years and just see if he resigns. 
that would be huge. Other teams interested are Pittsburgh, Philly, and Florida. Not really. Uh, we're, we're trying to make sure that we beat them out. So we're going to go ahead and offer him that contract. I'm a little worried because if he doesn't sign and Taves goes as well, then we're in some trouble because we kind of go into that middle that middle realm of, of defensemen. Uh, we'll take a look at uh, some forwards that are available. And we talked about this at the end of the last episode. Is William Nylander at 88 overall. He would be an awesome forward for us, and he wants currently 8.8. .8. That's a lot, but it would be nice to get him. Uh, we've also got Mantha in 87 overall, but we've got so many good forwards. Like, Let's just take, try and take a look at what the next season is going to look like we go and take a look at our main roster in terms of forwards so right now we've got hurdle and meyer bedard kalorn burakovsky and kutcher that's basically our top six really but then you also have eklund and savoy and then cody glass there's nine and then kuleman as well as chemlevsky and leonard are both 82s as well as cole sillinger and o'brien bordelow's there as well like we have so many options I don't think a forward is the play unless we move out somebody like we could move out Burakovsky and try and get Nylander. I think that might be pretty big. And honestly, that could be pretty sweet because Burakovsky is not going to play on the first line. He just does not fit with our current coach. So maybe that's the play. Like maybe we try for um, Nylander and move on from Burakovsky. I'd also want to see the free agency in terms of goaltenders. So Gorgiev is available. But, I mean, Talbot did fine, and he's so cheap, and he's an 81. Did we really want to spend a lot more a lot more of the cap on one of these goaltenders? I mean, we can go, we could go um, Ilya Samsonov, um, who had a great season last year, but I don't know if that's really what we should do. Um, I'm not really big on investing in goaltenders, especially in franchise mode, guys. It just does not seem to be uh, the play. So I am going to take a shot on Nylander. And just see what happens and we're gonna offer him what he wants and maybe he does sign with us um who's to say i mean we could go 8.9 for six years that's expensive but we're gonna see let's see what happens guys so um all right now let's just take a look real quick at our scouts and coaching staff i just want to make sure that's all in place so we do need an assistant coach in the nhl um but our coaching staff is becoming extremely good i mean we've got theo wilson who's an a across the board our associate coach, Lassard, is an A-, minus, which is huge. And then our goalie coach is an A-, minus teaching goaltender, so that's great as well. And then our AHL head coach, does Alan Gordon, does match, um, like I said earlier, does match all of the strategies um, that, uh, that our head coach does in the NHL, which is huge, guys. Again, you want to remember that you want this screen to match with your NHL head coach. That way, when you bring them up, you know if they fit on your first, second, third line, and so forth. So let's take a look, uh, look real quick at what assistant coaches are out there um, and just see if we can find any more teaching coaches because that would be pretty big. Um, right now, we've got a lot of head coach options. Is there any other A pluses? So it looks like it's just veterans, and I don't know how well that would fit as, uh, as an assistant coach, but we could try and sign him. Um, is there any other A plus? So B minus A plus. So Aiden uh, Corazzini. We'll try and throw the book at him to become our assistant coach. He's probably not going to accept. Um, but, you know, again, owner mode off. We'll try and see if we can just throw the book at him and see what happens. So we also need five more scouts as we did move on from some of the lower rated ones in terms of the overall. So we're going to take a look at what options we have here. So we still have three from the uh, the OHL, which are all B, C's, B or C's. We are going to need two more from the Q as well as one more from the W. Um, we'll take a look at the USA. So I mentioned, guys, take a look at the, the season that's about to happen. And you can see uh, where all of the players are going to be coming from. So uh, we'll take a look and see where um, these guys, you know, are, are going to be having to move. But real quick, we do want to hire uh, some more scouts. So the WHL, we do need one more, I think. And he is an A. Um, we've got, Aud sorry, her, Audrey Lindsay. Um, we're going to offer her the most and see if she'll sign because having the having the A play or the A scouts does help out, not just for the region, but just having the overall. It does help with. Uh, um, show or help with showing the amount of progression and things like that a little bit clearer than having like a D level coach. But you want to make sure the region is what is showing the most uh, in terms of any other A coaches. We don't want any NHL or AHL because we don't have Fog of War turned on. Um, but we could start getting one or two as our team gets a little bit better. But I think um, we still want to make sure that uh, as we're drafting and whatnot, we have that all sorted out. So we could go with another USA coach um as we've only got two so we'll try one more uh esteban frigion 
and we'll sign see if we can sign him as well as europe europe we have two we do need another qmjhl so let's take a look and see if there is any um no matter what we're gonna have to sign one so we'll take let's see here uh, if you look in this screen go to the qmjhl and a plus right here for, for vincent so we'll uh we'll go ahead and try and give him uh the most and there we go and maybe one more we'll see if Sivrets uh a plus for the q so we'll go ahead and throw all the money at that as well and there we go all right so there's a few scouts and our coach we'll see now we'll sim through and see if we get any of the signings in terms of um you know our free agents as well as our coaches all right so frignon does sign so one of our scouts does jump on board that's big vincent huey does sign as well so we got a few more scouts uh see Verrett does so that's all good it looks like all of our scouts did sign so now we're on the third day of free agency and i'm a little concerned here again so we want to make sure that the players that we're after so defensemen specifically I don't want Taves to go. There's five teams interested and seven interested in Carey. I'm really nervous that we're going to lose out on both because if we do, we're in real tough shape. I'm wondering if I should try and sign both, but then we're in a real bad spot because if both actually sign, um, that's, I mean, we do need two. That'd be 12 million. I'm wondering if we should move on from Burakovsky, but then again, we're in that situation where, you know what? We're going to do it here. And uh, that drops down quite a bit. One of them, we probably won't be able to afford one of them. I mean, right now we've offered 5.6 and 7.2. So that right there is like basically 13. And then we did, I believe, 9 for Nylander. Yeah, so we won't have enough cap space if everyone signs. But I doubt all of them sign. Okay, we'll see. This could be a worst case scenario, but we're going to try it. All right, Corazzini says he is happy to join the team. That's big because that was an A-minus coach. That is our assistant coach. Our coaching staff is loaded now. And Lindsay does uh, reject our offer. So there goes a, um, a scout. We offered more years than what she wanted. That's fine. And oh my goodness, we're getting close. Devin Tave signs with a Seattle Kraken. Okay, so that's one. All right, this is big because now we really need Carrier. And Carrier signs, huge. So Alexander Carrier, 27 years of age, a huge. He's going to be a staple on our top pairing of defensemen for the next, like, while. So that's a huge signing. And we still have Nylander, which we can afford because Tave signed with Seattle. And Nylander signs with the New York Islanders. Okay. All right, that's not the worst case scenario. And Burakovsky, wow, the Panthers do want Burakovsky. I don't know if I want to deal with the Panthers as they uh, ended our dreams of winning the Stanley Cup in our third season. All right, so now let's take a, a look at the the you know the landscape here. We've got 12.2 million in cap space. And we have about two years before all of our rookies all come up for big, huge deals that they're going to want like 10 million each. Um, so we we are in we are in good shape there. Uh, our defense is good. What other defensemen are available? So Rathbone is, but he's an RFA, and we're just not going to give up all the picks for that. Dylan DeMello. We could bring back Dylan DeMello as a shark, but that's three years at five, and he is an 85 overall, which isn't awful. Like, that's not a terrible price for him. We could bring back Edler. Hmm. I'm wondering if we grab Dylan DeMello. That does make our defense quite good. Let's take a look one more time at our contract situation here and just make sure that we have everyone that we want. So... We might have to make some moves. Like, first of all, Jay O'Brien is an 81 overall. He's a medium top six, and he's 24 years of age, so he could uh, improve. But I think we should. Oh, he's so cheap, though. That's the issue. John Leonard want, is is making 2.2.725 um, million, um, and he essentially is not going to grow anymore. So I think we should move on from him, and it's actually a three year deal, and that's essentially what O'Brien is. We also have Cole Sillinger on an entry level deal for another two seasons. So Leonard, we're going to move on from. Um, that, that I'm fairly certain of Hayden Fleury is okay. So in terms of forwards, let's take a look at a forward. So we've hurdle Bedard and Meyer. Let's just say that that's our top three, um, in terms of uh, our first line. Then we've got Kalorn Burakovsky, Kachur, second line, uh, Savoy, Eklund, Glass, third line, and then Kuleman, Chemlevsky, and Leonard, we're going to move and Cylinder is our fourth line. And then we've got O'Brien and Leonard that are kind of the odd men out here. Um, Leonard, we can definitely move on from. 
and that opens up a little bit more cap space to try and sign another impact defenseman because in terms of defensemen, we've got Carrier's an 88 overall. We've got Carlson, Ferraro, and then Fleury, Kanayev, and Merkley, um, who are very, very cheap. Fleury at 2.25 is a little pricey. Um, so we might be able to move on from him and we might be able to go after a decent goaltender. Like this is the issue. So we've got 281 overalls, but I think they're fine. Like, I think that's okay. I mean, we went to game six of the Stanley cup. So, hmm. All right, let's try. We do need to, we, we know we need to move on from, uh, from Leonard. So let's see if we can find a trade. We're going to go to the trading block and see what's available here. Um, we're just going to remove all of these guys and our wants, we are going to uh, actually just change them to 30. I don't want any older players, to be honest with you. So we'll go with 30 um, in terms of goaltender. And defenseman, same situation. I really don't want to go anymore because I still think our rebuild is still ongoing, right? Like, I don't think, like... And then current picks and future picks. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. That's fine. All right, let's see what we can get for, for uh, John Leonard. Um, and hopefully we can find a, an easy trade. I think we will be able to because he's still a decent player here. And just taking a look at what our trade value is, we've got Bedard, Carrier, Meyer, Savoy. Man, what a couple of great drafts. I forgot about Lots as well. Chandler Lots, who we drafted third overall in this draft that just happened. He's got Truculence too. Um, just a really good defenseman. And we're going to have to make a decision there too because, man, he's 79 overall. We've got Braden Yeager, who we did draft in 2023 at nine. Uh, medium Elite, 78 overall. Damn, that's uh, that's going to be some uh, tough decisions here. So let's go ahead and take a look at what uh, Leonard brings. And we'll see if we can find a trade. And there's 16. So we got a third and four from the Bruins. Uh, that is this year, next year. Uh, a second and a fifth from the Sabres. Second and fifth from Carolina. It looks like second and a fifth. Uh, second if it appears to be the best. We have Matheson, too expensive. Second fifth from the Jets. Yeah, we're gonna take the we're gonna take the Sabres here. And we'll get a second round pick and a fifth round pick into this upcoming draft because again, we kind of need to restock our picks because we had to make a lot to trade up. Um, I'm completely okay with this. So that clears out another forward spot. Um, and then again, we'll take a look at what other options we have. Uh, to move on from because our man our ahl team is going to be actually really good as well we could move on from o'brien unless we just put him in the ahl but he's 24 years of age so he's not going to really become anymore but maybe he's a two-way forward he fits the third line it just doesn't fit he just does not fit let's see what we can get from a second and a third this year wow okay all right a second and a fourth second and a third from the islanders Islanders is going to be a little bit better this year with uh, with Nylander, obviously. And the Jets and the Ducks. Chicago. Second and a fourth. Let's go with uh, the Jets. Second and a third this year. So now we've got a couple of second round, middle round picks here. What other picks do we have? Let's take a look. This draft, we've got a first, two seconds, two thirds, two fifths, a sixth, and a seventh. Okay. And then all of our picks next year. So our draft is pretty good uh, going into this one, which is nice. If we have to move our first round pick at the deadline, I'm pretty okay with that as well. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm really liking our team situation here. I think we go after and try to sign one of the big, de another, another defenseman here. I think that's probably the play. And we're really set up, especially if we only sign it for like two seasons, because then we can really have some maneuverability when it comes to, man, we can almost go after jack rathbone what does he fit he fits the first power play line in all penalty kill lines mm. maybe not maybe not let's take a look here our other options muzzin Ugh, muzzin wants a lot dylan Demello is probably it all penalty kill lines has shut down what is muzzin does muzzin fit Grizzlick. Fitz defensive pairing two. Did we just let it roll or do we sign someone else? I mean, we've got to use our cap space. What other forwards do we have? Man, ne Natchez would be really fun. Malkin on a one year deal, maybe. Arvidsson. He wants a two year deal at 86 overall. Fits bottom four, the bottom six. That'd be nice. 
Dude, what about Patrick Kane? 35 years of age on a one-year deal. I mean, that could be pretty fun. Fits the top six. Man, Cheadle's cheap, too. There's a lot of options here. Um, hmm. What is Cheadle? Two-way forward? Zuccarello, DeBrusque, Perron. Forward line one. Okay. Um, hmm. This is... No, we're going to sign DeMello. We are going to offer DeMello a contract. And we're going to try a two-year deal. How many teams want him? Just Winnipeg. Okay. We'll try and see if we can get him. I also want to see if there is uh, any other really, really good um, players that were in the draft that did not you know, did not go. So what you can do is you go and look by potential for two way deals and you'll see some of the players that, um, maybe missed in the draft or didn't get re-signed by other, a, um, other CPU teams. Like here's a 25 year old, uh, 80 air Brooke is a Josh Brooke is an 80 overall at 25, but he's, you know, wants a two way deal, which is nice. I'll uh, take a look if there's any forwards, medium top six. Is there any really young guys? Hmm. No one that's really sticking out here. I don't think. What about goaltenders? Usually there's some goalies. Like a low elite, low elite right here in Caden Primo, but he's 24, so like he's probably not going to develop enough, which is the issue. I think that might be it, and then we might have to make some moves. Um, Logan Couture. I do not want to trade Couture. All right, let's see. Here we go. Dylan DeMello signs with the Winnipeg Jets. Okay. I think uh, our best option is via trade then. So we are going to go ahead and sim to the next season and then see where we're at. All right, here we are, guys. The start of year four. We are just off our first Stanley Cup run. We got to game six before losing to the Florida Panthers. And we're going to take a look at our lines right now and see where we're at. All right, so Meyer, Hurdle, Burakovsky is where it automatically sets. And we're going to see if we can't move this around. I do like Hurdle here, but Bedard is definitely the future. We like, hmm. Switching Bedard and Hurdle gives us two plus five lines so that's probably the play but savoy is also a center that's the issue here is we have a lot of centermen we might be able to move couture off of center but what's our face off rating 90 on the face off for hurdle 89 for bedard what's savoy 80 so we can definitely go like that now do we have enough right wingers i don't know if we do uh left wing left wing left wing center center we have a lot of centermen which is okay again that gives us some freedom of our lineup i guess uh, but this actually does look really nice i mean we've got ivan kuhleman sure and william eckland i mean look at this lineup i mean dolan we're gonna have to move on from but he is actually let's see if we can switch this up so if we go Kachur here no that doesn't fit we'll go like that um and then Dolan, I believe, doesn't. But Dolan fits perfectly on the second line. Kuhlman does not really fit, but he does enough. The Sillinger. Sillinger does fit everywhere. Thomas Bordalo fits the second line. We might have to move Bordalo down. Uh, and then Cody Glass. Uh, okay. All right, so there are some things that we have to move, we have to fix around here. Defensively, wow. Okay, this is not going to do it. So our new top-end defenseman, Alexander Carrier, is a plus five with Ferraro. We've got Aiden Fleury as well as Eric Carlson at a plus five. And then Kanai, Jeb, and Merkley just do not want to play with each other, which is okay, I guess. Who does not want to go here? So Merkley and then Kanai, Jeb really does not fit, but hmm. Like, this appears to be the only way to get these guys to work together, which I guess isn't awful. We could split it up even more, but I don't know if I like that. I like, actually. Plus five, plus three, but that's plus one, so. You know what? I actually like the balance of this a little bit more. Man, what a good lineup here. Okay, and we can mess around with that a little bit more as well. In terms of goaltenders, we've got Talbot, and Philip Lindbergh did jump up to an 83, so that way, what a pickup there. Uh, so Lindbergh is now going to be our starter going into this year. And uh, on offense, who is scratched? That's another thing. Man, we have a lot of depth. We still have Kalorn and Chmielewski who is scratched. So Dolan's got to go here. And we're going to uh, activate Kalorn. 
And Kaloran fits that second line right there. Who does not fit? Tomash Hurdle. Let me guess. No? Okay. I mean, it's a plus three all the way around, which isn't bad at all. Man, I love this lineup. I'm not going to lie, guys. I love this lineup. So we've also got Bordalo. Is he a rookie this year? I think he is. Yes. So, hmm, interesting. I would like to have another rookie, but I don't know if we're going to get another shot at it. Then we've got Cole Sillinger. Who's a better centerman? Uh, 86, 86, 78, so it doesn't really matter here. I would like Cole Sillinger, I think, here in center. Just bigger body. I like this a little bit more. Um, okay. There we go. All right, here we go. All right, now let's take a look at the AHL as well, because our AHL, we do want to have them strongly improve this year. And, man, the talent is definitely there. Um, as Okay, so we drafted Larmond in the third round, and he is a medium top nine. Timur Igberg... Wow, I can't even say that. Igor Gamov, what a name, as we drafted. This is a draft pick from 2019. We've got Raska Gushkin from my Niagara Ice Dogs is still trying to develop. He's almost there. Man, just no one wants to fit this team. So we're going to have to move some things around here. Ozzy Weisblatt, oh, man, he does. We're gonna have to trade him. He is gonna be a trade piece, um, or we could put him on the fourth line in the NHL because he does fit the fourth line. Because you see here, guys, in the bottom right, you'll see how he fits the, fir the first, second, and third line. He doesn't really fit all that well. That is because that is why we have our head coach that has the same stats or same um, strategies as our AHL head coach because we know that when we bring Ozzy Weisblatt up, it's gonna be the exact same. So he fits the fourth line in the AHL, means he's gonna fit the fourth line in the AHL, or the NHL, sorry. On defense, Gannon LaRock. I'm just trying to see how many draft picks. We have a lot of draft picks that we signed here. Um, don't have a lot of defensemen, though. Pass and Chuck. Um, and Femis is another one. What about Net? It's Melnichuk and Sachenko. So we're going to have to do a lot of work here and see. Um, what about forwards that are not? Um, we've got Robbins and Femis. Okay. So Femus does not look like he is going to. Okay, Phillips fits the second line. Sure. Okay, and he is a playmaker. Okay, Gushkin's a grinder, which is not accurate in real life at all. Um, two way forward and a grinder as well. A lot of grinders. My goodness. That's why this team is having such a hard go here. I mean, we've got a lot of great players that might do well. Um. in the NHL on the fourth line, which is actually kind of sweet, not gonna lie. And the defensively, that looks fine as well. Okay, hmm, interesting. All right, guys, um, this is gonna be, we'll take a look at our signed scouts as well. Uh, we're also gonna have to sign two more scouts, so we'll go. I'll go ahead and do that in a second, but what I wanna do is we'll go to change region, and I wanna see where all of the players are this year. So we'll go to the CHL. And, okay, so the WHL is 90 forwards, 52 defensemen, and 8 goaltenders. 90, 44, and 13, so roughly the same. And then 80, 39, and 21. So um, pretty much balanced all the way across there. Let's take a look at uh, the U.S., because that's usually the region that has the most uh, discrepancy here. Um, 12, 14, and 1 in terms of prospects. 34, 31, and 7. So the West has basically no one. And then the, the Central has quite a few. And then the East really doesn't have a lot either. So we're probably going to put maybe one scout in... Hmm. One scout in the West, and then two in the Central, and none in the East. Depending on what prospects are, like, really good. In terms of the Nordic, there's literally none in Alaska Van. Liga has a lot, and the SHL has quite a bit as well. So we are not going to have any in Alaska Van, and we're going to have a lot uh, for Liga. In Europe, we have got uh, DEL is 17 and 11, 9 and 10 for ICE, none for them. And then uh, the Nash the NLA has a few. So, And then Russia as well. Take a look at Russia. 44, 31, and 5. There's a lot in Russia rest of the world is none all right so we do have to move some of these around um so i'm gonna go ahead we actually have to we have to try and get another um shl and liga for sure because there is a lot of uh a lot of uh players coming out of that in this year's draft so currently 
If we go down to, yeah, we don't have any. So that is an issue. We're gonna have to try and sign two for that league. So give me one second. We'll go through and see if we can't do that. All right, so that's all taken care of. We'll just see if they re-sign. And we're really gonna have to see about making trades because we have a lot. All right, so Ninema signs and Aspen. Okay, so now we can actually set up our uh, our scouting like we normally do. And for anyone that doesn't know, yeah, I mean, you if you've been watching this series all the way through, you know how to uh, to do the, the scouting already. So I'll go ahead and do that off of, and we'll fast forward through that. Take a look at the draft class real quick. Is there any... Yeah, we don't know yet. So we'll take a look at how that does in December, roughly. I just don't know about our lines here going into year four. Hmm. I think Savoy... Up a, I don't know if Burakovsky I want. I think I need to move on from Burakovsky. If we can find a playmaker to go on this first line, or maybe Savoy is it. Maybe Savoy is it. You know, and Eklund, Eklund can't go there. Wow. Hurdle down to the third does give him a plus five, but that's not really worth it at all. Uh, and I really don't want to move on from any of these guys. Bordelow's interesting. Do I put him in the AHL? That's one that's tough. And then we have Jonathan Dahl and, and Chemlevsky. We do it. Oh, Chemlevsky might be the play here, actually. Let's see if Chemlevsky fits. Second line. But not more than Burakovsky, really. Hmm. And it kind of makes the third line worse, but... You know what? That isn't awful. I know it does make them worse, but the overall is much better. Sillinger really fits the team. So does Glass. And Chenilevsky fits the second line. Kalorn fits the second line. Hurdle doesn't really fit the first line, but maybe we go like that. Okay. We're going to leave it like this, I think. And then we'll see how the season goes. Defensively, I like this as well. Okay. And then the AHL. The AHL is tough. I mean, we have a lot of good players that are becoming good players, but we'll see. Okay. All right, guys. So we are going to uh, sim through the first part of the season, and I'm going to set the, the um, scouts and all of that, and then I'll see you guys uh, around the end of December and see where we're at. All right, guys. Here we are on December 1st, and we are 16-1-3 as these sharks are absolutely dominating. So uh, definitely uh, the rebuild is in full effect as we are absolutely cruising with William Eklund leading the team in points, Matthew Savoy right behind him at 22 and Bedard at 20. So three of our prospects, one or two that we drafted in this rebuild and then William Eklund who we got uh, in, we, we inherited as the Sharks top prospect are all leading the way. We've got Kuhleman, Kachur and Meyer. We obviously wanna see Meyer and Hurdle do a little bit better in all honesty. And we'll just take a look down at the bottom if there's anyone that was super uh, kind of disappointing, but I'm not really seeing anyone. We'll take a look in net as Lindbergh is 15-1-3, but only a 904 save percentage. So um, obviously a little crazy there that that's a little low. We'll take a look around the entire league. And in terms of skaters and points, 29 points for Austin Matthews leads the league. Um, so our, our our closest would be Eklund at 23. So not really out of the realm possibility that we can catch up there. In terms of uh, goals, Matthews leads with 18. And we uh, Burakovsky has 12, uh, 12 goals, 2 assists, as he does not like to pass the puck at all. Uh, we'll take a look at defensemen real quick to see where we stack up there. Ekblad is having a great season, 27 points in 17 games, which is uh, just absolutely wild we really don't have anyone uh kind of within reach there which is kind of disappointing we got carlson with 14 so uh we'll see how that plays out we'll also take a look at the rookie skaters as bear glencross who is someone that we could have picked in the 2023 draft um just i remember that name specifically as a uh, right winger there he's got 17 points in 21 games lucas reichel from the blackhawks finally up with a big team miro shichenko 14 and then K artemi kanayajev who is our defenseman with with 13 in 20, which is extremely surprising there. So he is having, he's turning into one of the better uh, prospects for us. So really good to see that. And then obviously we're 16, one and three. Um, I don't feel the need to change literally anything. 
And we'll just remind you guys of the lineup. We've got Savoy up with Hurdle and Meyer, who are just not performing um, all that well like a first unit. We'll take a look at the special teams, but even the special teams units are just absolutely stacked here. If you've got Kanayajev and Sillager, they're all plus fives. Um, maybe a little mix and match there as, um, you know, they're kind of all over the place. The penalty kill, that's fine as well. Eklund and Hurdle there. Actually, I don't know if I want, I mean... I mean, if they're doing fine, Cody Glass is a little bit better on face-off, so maybe we go like that. And then Hurdle, actually, could we go? I'd rather have Couture at center. We'll try that, see how that works out. Um, and then, yeah, our goaltenders are doing fine. Let's take a look at the AHL and see how they're doing, but obviously not the same chemistry uh, as we are 16-3-3. Three three. So with Scott Reedy leading the way with 20 points in 22 games. So we are just buzzing as a franchise. There's literally no need to make any moves at all. So we're going to go ahead and sim all the way um, to the deadline here. Actually, you know what? Before we do that, we're going to go to January 1st, and we'll take a look at the um, at the uh, prospects and how the draft is shaping up because that will be our first uh, of our three scouting sessions that we'll do. As a couple losses here mounting up as we sim through uh, December, and we're right back into the wind column here. We might have a record-setting season with these Sharks, which terrifies me because normally in NHL games, uh, if you win the President's Trophy, you normally get knocked out in the first round. As we finish the year... 26, 3, and 4, and we are five points up on the Oilers for first in our division. Just absolutely buzzing. As Matthew Savoy, point per game, leading the way. Uh, but let's take a look at that draft class because we are going to have to reassign our scouts. So we'll take a look at the draft class. And at the top, Walker Davidson is a medium elite. So it doesn't look like there's any franchises. Jonathan Tamura. Um, of NLA, we don't have any scouts there, so we might have to just send someone because I do want to see um, if if he is really good. The one thing is, is we won't we don't have anyone else's first round pick, so our first round pick is going to be down near the bottom, um, which means that we're probably not going to have a shot at any of those top tens. Um, and to be honest, there isn't really how many are there. We'll just take a look real quick. I mean, there isn't that many. So I don't really have a need to or see the need to really trade up that high because it looks like as we go down in the middle here, there are some elites um, scattered throughout the first round, which is what we're probably going to go after. So I'm going to redo the scouting here and then we'll sim it to the deadline as we are having a record setting season. All right, guys, here we are just a few days before the trade deadline in 2025. It's March 5th. And we are 91 points in 60 games. So we are 42, 11, and 7. We are going to more than likely win the division and probably lock up first place in the league. Connor Bedard leading the way with 54, 54 points in 60 games. We did slip up a little bit there in February. But that's okay. I think it might be time, though, as Bedard is now up to a 92 overall. Sorry, Hurdle, you are the man, but you are dropping down there as Connor Bedard, our franchise center at 92 overall, is definitely going to be taking uh, the reins there as Meyer, Savoy, and Bedard looks to be our absolute lockdown first unit on forward. And then we have Burakovsky as well with Hurdle and Kalorn there. I'm just curious if there's any other changes we could make. I mean, Hurdle is now down. Uh, he's got 24 goals. Wow, in 60 games. That's not bad at all. And then we've got Sillinger as well as... Yeah, they're doing fine. On the back end, we've got... Um, wow, yeah, okay. So Kniazhev, Kniazhev is doing phenomenal as a rookie. Merkley and Ferraro, they are extremely high in plus minus. And then in nets... We'll take a look as Lindbergh is now a 9-12 save percentage. Six shutouts there. Um, and Talbot's doing great as a backup. So everything is looking to be in line there. We just want to see some more. Um, we just need to see some of our impact forwards kind of just go absolutely off um, in terms of offense. Our AHL team is almost mimicking our NHL team. 44, 11, and 6. And we are out in front in the... Uh, actually, we're with the Griffins in terms of points. But in terms of our division, we are dominating the Pacific uh, with Scott Reedy leading the way there. So I uh, just want to take a look at the contract situation and things that we need to think about. Maybe extensions as well as uh, if we should trade anyone at the deadline. So right now, uh, Eklund, Kalorn, and Kuhlman are on the last years of their deal. So Eklund, we do need to re-sign. Um, and in terms of an extension, what he wants, um, he, let's see, does he want actually, he does want to re-sign, which is big. Uh, so we can go a little bit lower than what he wants. And if we sign him, he's not going anywhere. We are signing him um, until actually maybe four years. If we do four years, we get his RFA status again. If we go five, um, hmm, six at eight million per, 
He's only an 86 overall, but I'm just wondering how much higher he's going to get. I'm trying to think if in four years at 7.3, that'll be interesting. Hmm. Like we could go as low as like 6.2. Let's see if 6.7 for four years is doable. And we'll see if he accepts that contract. That would be huge. Kalorn, I don't think that we're going to extend. Like, how much does he want? Oh, Four million, that's it. At 35 years of age, he is going to drop quite a bit, though. And we have too many prospects and players that are trying to push the lineup. Um, I mean, Kuhlman, for example. Man, what a steal he was in the draft, huh? Um, and we could go right up to his RFA status. And that's only six million. Like 85% of that is 5.1. So we'll see if he accepts 5.4 would be huge. I mean, that's a steal of a contract. Burakovsky. Part of me wants to move on from Burakovsky right now and see if we can get another high-end pick. But we are trying to win a cup. But he is a UFA, and I don't really have any intention of signing him. Again, at 30 years of age, at 6.2. Again, we have too many players coming up. Uh, Merkley does want an, uh, an extension, and that is going to be expensive. Let's see. He's gonna he's a UFA in two years, and he's gonna want more. So uh, that's safe. What the what is six? Uh, let's see what this ends up being. It's five point six million. He wants if we can if we can finesse that. We'll try five point seven five for four years. That's pretty safe as well. He's already an 85 overall. Chemilevsky is interesting as well because we don't even really need him. But he only wants 2 million. Like, that's kind of huge. Even at 3. Hmm. 2 years. Let's try 3 and see if we can get him for this amount. I mean, this would be extremely cheap. Um, we might have to go to like 2.4. Let's see if he takes that. Yeah, as we clear up all these contracts, we're in business, though, because then we don't have to worry about it in the future. And as you leave the contracts into the future, it does cost you a lot more to re-sign them around free agency. So keep that in mind. Um, man, we got to move on from Dolan. dolan has got to go. He's only a million, uh, but we've got to move on from him. So we're going to see if we can get any picks for him at the deadline. Bordalo is, well, man, Bordalo is off his entry-level deal. He wants nothing, though. I mean, a two-way deal. I mean, that's that's nothing. We might as well try there. That's a huge savings here. Hayden Fleury. I think we can move on from him, too. I mean, hmm. in the system for defensemen, though, we have no one. I mean, we could call up Kinejov. He wants an extension, too, though. and Or Lots. I mean, our, our third overall pick, we might be able to move up Lot, Chandler Lots. I think we're min-maxing it a little too much by moving on from Flurry though. Because Flurry is having a decent year. Plus 27 on that third pairing. That's nuts. Cody Glass and Ferraro. I'm not I'm making sure we sign Ferraro because he is one of my favorite players in the real thing. So I'm staying true to that. But we'll see. Actually, I want to fast forward here and see how, what players resign, because that is gonna change some things. Uh, but we do need to find a trade. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's find a trade for some of the guys that we know we are going to move on from. Uh, so specifically, uh, we want Jonathan Dolan. So let's see what we can get for Dolan. Can get a third and a fifth this year and from the Edmonton Oilers. And I can accept that. That's fine. So we get a third and a fifth there all before the deadline. Hmm. Hayden Fleury could actually get us something in return, though. I just don't know. What about in nets? I mean, we've got a first. I would love another first round pick. I don't know, guys. I don't know. Let's just see. Let's fast forward a couple days here, and we'll see how our team does and, and who resigns, because that might change some things. So. All right, we're playing the Edmonton or the Montreal Canadiens, and we. All right, so Chemilevsky does resign. That's huge because he that was really cheap. Merkley resigns. That's huge. Ackland resigns. Bordalo resigns. Kuhlman resigns. That is awesome, and we lose again to the Montreal Canadiens. 
Um, I guess I'm just blessed or, uh, you know, I'm kind of annoyed with any loss as we had that huge start. But that's big. I mean, we saved a ton of cap um, as, damn. Like we have 14 mil in cap space right now. I'm thinking we go and get a huge impact player right now. And we can move Burakovsky. Like, we trade Burakovsky and maybe a prospect or two. And we just go get someone huge. Maybe even Hayden Flurry. What would that look like? What would that look like? I mean, Burakovsky's fine, though. He's got 30 goals, man. Mm. Maybe we don't. Like, I don't want to mess with the team at all. Our team is doing so well. I think we just stay the course. I honestly do. I think we just stay the course. I'm wondering if there's any... Hmm. You know what? We're going to stay the course. I don't think we need to trade anyone. We'll go to the deadline. We'll go to the deadline and see what's there. But I don't think like a big name. I don't know if we really need to at all. As we lose there. So we are a buyer. And we'll enter the deadline here and see what is available to us. So Travis Sanheim is available as he is a 89 overall top four lead defenseman how how big is that contract if it's all penalty kills two more years remaining at 7.6 28 years of age i mean that would be nice that would be nice nice do they want burakov they probably don't want burakovsky is the issue they want lots of draft picks and we do have a lot of draft picks it's a huge trade alert down at the bottom. The Blackhawks trade Dylan Strom and a fourth of Seattle in exchange for a round two in Klingberg. Wow, so the um, kind of an interesting trade there. We could go a lot of picks. Man, I just don't think that that's the play. Martin Natchez, who was a free agent this year. It doesn't look like he's actually re-signed, so that'd be pointless. William Carlson. Slightly better. Yeah, I just don't think Evander Kane imagine. Uh Anthony Mantha. You know what? I just don't think anyone is is worth it. I don't think anyone is worth it. We have so many good players. And I, I you know, there isn't even any that many that are on expiring deals that that we should move on from and like save. We have a lot of prospects coming up too. You know what? No, I think we're good here. We are going to exit the deadline. We're going to sim the rest of the season and see what happens. Um, because I don't think there's any reason to mess with this at all. William Carrier. Okay, okay. Nah, no reason to sign him. All right. Let's take a look if we have any players. Now, we're not. I don't think Bedard is going to have enough to catch up and we haven't had anyone win the art ross or anything yet that's uh one thing uh we have not had so let's go ahead and sim to the end of the year and see where we're at do need to interrupt it on april to redo the scouting but i guess we could do a nice little snapshot here as we have locked up a playoff spot i mean that was pretty much a given at 52 15 and 8 we have 112 points after 75 games played i think we've locked up the president's as well yeah we have locked up the president's trophy so uh what a season from us there but in terms of just like points we don't have a like it's all spread out we have 63 points leading the way is connor bedard at 75 games and eklund and hurdle then savoy meyer kutcher we have a ton of like wow 48 points on the back end from artemi kanayev is awesome as a rookie in turn actually you know what as a matter of fact i wonder how far back he would be from the norris shot I mean, sorry, from a uh, Rookie of the Year spot. I mean, Braden Tracy's got 58 points, which is 10 more. He's probably going to win, but 48 on the back end is... Uh, I mean, we locked up a stud on the back end there, so uh, that's pretty sweet. I'm not going to lie. Um, but uh, in terms of our the, the draft, let's take a look at the draft classes. Now we're going to have a better picture. As we've got Walker Davison... 
and Jonathan Tamura. So there's no franchise players here at all. So like I mentioned earlier, there's really no reason for us to trade up in the draft and we're going to have a low pick. So as we go down in this middle part here, we're looking for anyone that's a, a medium elite kind of at the end of the first round. There isn't really any right now. Uh, there's a few that have an option or have the possibility to. So uh, we'll wait and see there. But I'm going to go ahead and redo all of the scouts one more time and see where we end up. We'll finish out the regular season. All right. So we finished the season 58, 15, and 9 for 125 points, locking up our first President's Trophy in our rebuild. Bedard leads the way with the team with 73 points, which is stunningly low. Hurdle right behind him with 72. And then we've got Meyer at 64, Savoy at 63. We have five players over the 60 point plateau. And then we've got another five players that are above 50. That is insane scoring. Kanaya Jeff finishes his rookie season with 49 points in 82 games on the back end, which is an incredible showing uh, of offense there. In terms of goaltenders, uh, Lindbergh, 48 wins in 70 games. 914 save percentage like that is wild that he did that well and uh man we are uh we, we we can't be upset with that at all in terms of goal scoring burakovsky had 36 goals he had the most goals on the team hurdle and couture both clipped 30 as well so the goal scoring is down a little bit we're gonna take a look at who we end up playing because it's not decided yet the ahl we finished first in the division as well with 115 points, good for third in the league. Uh, we dominated that division. So Scott Reedy had 71 points in 81 games. So our AHL team, they are starting to come along as well. And we are going to be playing in the first round The Anaheim Ducks. Okay, so I'm not upset about that. We will be playing the Anaheim Ducks in the first round. And uh, back in year one, they loaded up on offense there. And, uh, you know, Goudreau, Zegras, Perron, Kadri, Perot, Tracy, who it looks like he's going to win Rookie of the Year. Mason McTavish is there at 88 overall. We got Troy Terry, Eberle, just a balanced offensive attack. And then, man, Lindholm, Drysdale, Henry Thrun, Fowler, Larson, and Benoit. And then in net, I'm going to assume it's Gibson at 86 overall. So we have got a absolute battle in front of us in that first round. But we're going to save that for the next episode, guys. Thank you for watching as we attempt to win our first Stanley Cup here in year number four. Make sure you guys tune in next time. Have a good one.